Today, I wanted to talk to you about Jacob, his exceptional work ethics, and a questionable Jewish tradition which claims that Jacob was a yeshiva student. Today, we will examine this tradition and the serious question it presents. This question concerns us all. Where do we, as observant Jews, as Christians, or as Messianic believers, stand before God regarding our prayer times and study times? What should be first in our life? God, a devout family life, or a career in financial success? It is very hard to be successful and fully invested in all three spheres of life, not only as they often contradict each other, but also because our time is limited and we only have 24 hours a day to get it all done. In order to achieve a real financial success, one has to be willing to invest in work and business much time and effort, to be focused and to make sacrifices. However, building a, a good and devoted family also requires time, focus, and sacrifices. Many of us are thankful for our mother's willingness to give up her career for nurturing family life. But this is exactly my point. One comes at the expense of another. And where is God in this picture? He requires us to be honest in business, to tithe from our income, and to be compassionate to the less fortunate. Can I sit and study Torah all day long at the expense of my family? And what about work, income? How can we find the right balance between these three spheres of our life? Family, career, and God. Do we need to choose one over the other? Shall we choose God at the expense of family or a career? This is a question behind the Jewish idea that in his youth, Jacob was a yeshiva student meaning that Jacob sat and studied the Word of God all day long. This idea is coming from the interpretation of verse 27 of chapter 25. So the boys grew and Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field. But Jacob was a mild man, dwelling in tents. Many commentaries were written in an attempt to understand the phrase dwelling, sitting, in tents. The traditional interpretation of this phrase is that Jacob was sitting and studying Torah. How do the rabbis describe it? Jacob was a mild man, sitting, dwelling, in tents. Since the text doesn't say sitting in a tent, but in tents, they interpreted it as he was leaving the Midrash school of Shem and went into the school of Evil, and from the school of Evil to the school of Abraham. For many Jewish sages, sitting in tents, meaning that Jacob was a yeshiva student, a rabbinical disciple. They use it as a justification of long hours dedicated to prayer and Torah study at the expense of taking care and providing for one's family or an army service. I do not think that this kind of interpretation and lifestyle is exclusively a Jewish problem, but rather a general religious problem common to many religion. In ultra-Orthodox Judaism, we see the willingness to sacrifice a job and a career for the sake of Torah study. It is quite common that men dedicate their lives to study in prayer while 
women are left to provide for the family and to take care of the children at the same time. In Christianity, a similar mindset is found in the monastery lifestyle. When people are sacrificing a family life and material pleasures for the sake of prayer and meditation in accordance with their religious system. It is not different in the case of the Buddhist monks. So as I said before, this is a general problem of any religion. This concept is not foreign to us as Messianic believers. We believe in God with all our hearts, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We love God. We want to serve Him. We want to invest in our faith, in prayer, in the study of the Word, and good works. To have God in the center of our lives is our ideal. So how can we keep the balance between the different spheres of life, between family, job, and life of faith in service to the Lord? Let's look at Yeshua's answer when He was asked about the greatest of all commandments. One of them, an expert in the law, tested Him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on those two commandments. Yeshua could have said, love the Lord your God, and that's it. That is the greatest commandment. But He didn't stop here. He carried on and love your neighbor as yourself. This was absolutely necessary. Yeshua is telling us that the commandments are not limited to our relationships with God, but our faith is expressed through the way we treat our neighbors, or a stranger passing by. Yeshua said that the entire Torah is founded on those two commandments. Yeshua's teaching is practical and familiar to us as Jews who know the expression pikuach nefesh, saving a life. And we know that saving a life comes before the Torah, before the Shabbat, and before all the commandments. Yeshua is teaching us that when there is a person in trouble, all the commandments are canceled. That is why Yeshua healed on the Shabbat, Matthew 12 and more. We cannot be only focused upwards, but we need to think both about above and what's around us. The greatest challenge of our lives is to find the right balance between heavenly matters and earthly responsibilities. Both the Bible and the New Testament teach us about relationships with our brothers, with our neighbors, and proper attitude to those around us. And although God comes first, the most important aspect of serving God is serving others around us. What I am trying to say here is that we believe in God and we want to serve Him. But in what way can a person serve God? He serves his neighbors in the name of God. A believer serves his neighbors because he believes in God. Let's go back to Jacob. So the boys grew, and Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, but Jacob was a mild man, dwelling in tents. Can we explain and understand the expression dwelling in tents differently? Yes, as we find a similar expression only a few chapters earlier. Dwelling in tents and have livestock. 
Dwelling in tents means being a shepherd. Genesis 4 tells us about two brothers, Yuvel and Yuval. One invented music instruments. The other was the founder of shepherding, of animal domestication, the first rancher, so to speak. When we think of what did Jacob do in his youth, did he study Torah, pray, care about his spiritual well-being, search for God? The answer to all these questions is found in the rest of Jacob's story. So let's examine his behavior. Upon his arrival to Haran, even before entering the town, Jacob met a large group of shepherds sitting near the well doing nothing. What does Jacob tell them? Look, he said, the sun is still high. It is not time for the flocks to be gathered. Water the sheep and take them back to pasture. What are you doing here? He asks them. Why are you wasting your time? Go back to pasture. Jacob is lecturing local shepherds about work. Could he do it? if he was not a hard worker himself? From this conversation, we can assume that Jacob grew up working as a shepherd, and it bothers him to see others not doing their job. Jacob proves himself as a person of action. He went over and rolled the stone away from the mouth of the well and watered his uncle's sheep. Here, we discover that Jacob was very strong, stronger than average, while all the shepherds were waiting to gather together to move the heavy stone from the mouth of the well, Jacob was strong enough to do it by himself. Later, he will fight the angel in the plains of the Yavok River. He is strong. We also discover that he knew how to water the flock. We learn that being a shepherd is what he does. It is in his blood. That's what he is good at. The scripture tells us that after meeting Rachel and the rest of the family, Levan said to him, Surely you are my bone and my flesh. And he stayed with him for a month. What did Jacob do during his first month with Levan? Was he sitting and studying Torah? Did he search for answers to empiric questions like, what does God want from me? Why am I in Haran? How did I get into this trouble? What is the meaning of my life? Not at all. In the next verse, gives us an answer. Then Lavan said to Jacob, Because you are my relative, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what should your wages be? We understand that Jacob didn't rest for a minute. All this time he was working diligently, watching Lavan's flocks. Lavan saw Jacob's work and offered him a job. Why? Because he was impressed with Jacob's work ethics. He wanted this diligent worker for himself before his neighbors would make Jacob an offer and steal from him this good employee. Jacob was successful in everything he did. Jacob stayed and worked for Lavan for 20 years. In chapter 30, we read about the trick he did when he and Lavan decided to split the flocks so every family will have what is theirs. They decided to divide flocks by color, separating spotted animals from even colored. In order to get the desirable results, Jacob placed rods with stripes by the place where animals were conceiving. 
We are dealing here with an expert in shepherding who knows how to manipulate the circumstances in order to get what he wants. Thus, the man became exceedingly prosperous and had large flocks, female and male servants, and camels and donkeys. This is written about Jacob. Jacob was herding Levan's flocks with diligence and endurance, often in harsh conditions. We learn it from the conversation between Jacob and Levan. These 20 years I have been with you. Your eels and your female goats have not miscarried their young. And I have not eaten the rams of your flock. That which was torn by beasts, I did not bring to you. I bore the losses of it. You required it from my hand. Whatever stolen by day or stolen by night, there I was in the day the drought consumed me and the frost by night. And my sleep departed from my eyes. It was because of Jacob's work ethics that God had protected him all these years. God has seen my affliction and the labor of my hands and rebuked you last night, says Jacob to Lavan. Discussing Jacob, the Jewish sages teach us the following principle that is worthwhile applying to our lives as well. The merit acquired from labor may be helpful even when the influence of one's ancestors is not. This saying means that a man cannot say, I will eat, drink, and enjoy myself without working, and God will bless me. No, a man needs to work, to do things with his own hands, and only then will he be receiving God's blessing. I believe that this Torah portion teaches us the correct balance in life, as we all need to find a healthy balance between family, job, and our faith. Yes, maybe my career will not be at the top of my abilities. But so what if I am surrounded by a loving family? And maybe I am not the greatest Bible scholar, but I am doing pretty well at my job, and I am a decent and honest person. Life in this world requires us to work and to earn a living, to build our future, to invest in the family and in the next generation, and to teach them about faith in God. We must remember that we are accountable before God. Shabbat Shalom.